Jesus' words reveal God to us, and we've spent several videos looking at the things Jesus said and talking about how they provide insight into the image of God. But just as important as what Jesus said is what Jesus did. If Jesus is the image of God, the divine incarnation, and I fully believe he is, then his actions are no less than God's actions on earth. We've heard Jesus, but how now do we see Jesus? In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is baptized, faces temptation in the wilderness, and then calls his first disciples. That's pretty consistent with Matthew and Luke's account of how things happen. But Mark focuses on three activities in the first half of his book, almost a cycle of activities. In chapter 1, verse 21, Jesus enters a town called Capernaum, where he teaches in a synagogue. Then Jesus is confronted by a man with what Mark calls an unclean spirit. Jesus rebukes the spirit and commands it to be silent and to come out of the man. And it does. Everyone is amazed. Then Jesus leaves the synagogue and at the home of Simon and Andrew, he spends an entire day healing the sick and disabled and demon-possessed. This is almost exclusively what Jesus does for the first six chapters of Mark's gospel. Teaches, drives out the spiritual forces of darkness, and heals. Now, the second half of the book still includes these elements, but it also builds on them. We'll look at the second half of Mark's gospel tomorrow, but I want to think about the pattern of behavior we see in Jesus in these first six chapters. Jesus is the teacher. Jesus overcomes unclean spirits. Jesus heals. God wants to teach us. In fact, God has always, since the foundation of the world, wanted humanity to come to him for wisdom and not seek it elsewhere. Entire books in the Old Testament are dedicated to admonishing God's people to call on him and him alone for wisdom. God and God alone is able to overcome the powers of darkness. Humanity constantly finds themselves submitting to these powers, either willingly or through force. God's people in the Old Testament, they find themselves locked in battle with nations that worshipped these same unclean spirits, but oftentimes they chose to accept these unclean spirits for themselves, worshipping them, trusting them, and becoming enslaved by them. God also spends much of the Old Testament pleading with his people to take up the cause of the sick, crippled, and poor. He writes into the law that he gives to Israel provisions for these groups. He cares deeply about them. In all three cases, Israel fails to consistently pursue God. They seek wisdom of the world and reject God as their great teacher. They adopt the false gods of other nations and become enslaved by them instead of pursuing the one who would drive out those same dark powers. They abandon those who are hurt and in need and choose to ignore those needs, rejecting God's heart for those who are most in need of compassion. Jesus teaches us the wisdom of God. He offers us God's protection, and he offers us God's healing. God the teacher, God the protector, God the healer. In showing us clearly this image of God, Jesus gives us a, a picture of what we, as image bearers, should be about. I love you, and I pray today that you would seek God's teaching, protection, and healing. Just as importantly, however, I pray that you would teach what God teaches, protect what God protects, and heal where you are able.